Welcome to Living Well. I'm so glad that you joined us for this segment today. We have a very important topic called home detox. We've heard about the body being detox, but many times we do not think about some of the things that are in our homes that may be causing us to become sick. So my name is Dr. Jennifer Sankey, and today our guest is going to be Burnett Gunn. What I do want to remind you is that this program is for educational purposes only, and that we do not assess, diagnose, treat any medical, psychological, any conditions. So any information that you may have regarding that, we ask that you talk to your personal physician. We also want to let you know it's okay to write notes. It's already okay to ask questions. We're going to open up the mic at the end for you to have any questions for Burnett. But what we want to talk about today, there's three things that we want to focus on. What is a home detox? Why do we need to do it? And how do you do it? It's usually the how that gets us. So I'm hoping there's at least one thing that you can take away today that you can apply to your personal life or that you can begin to use after the program's over. Again, I do want to welcome you. So welcome our guest, Burnett Gunn. Welcome, Burnett. Hi, hi, everyone. We are doing wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, recently we had a conversation about things that are in our home that can cause us to be sick and we don't even know it. So let's right. talk about some of the things that I know you've had that experience recently. Kind of let's give me a little setup of why do people need to detox their home? Well, because we are on this journey now, we're on these calls each week and we're trying to make changes in our bodies and things like that, but we don't think about the fact that every day we're using products, we're exposed to products that are not the best of things for us to use and they cause different side effects um, in our bodies and cause different ailments and things and then we run to the doctors so that we could, you know, get um, prescriptions, which also has more side effects when sometimes it's just as simple as eliminating those toxins and stuff that you're exposed to or using unbeknownst to you that will help uh, remedy the problem. So, you know, Bernard, I was actually doing some research this week. And I learned that we spend about 90% of our time indoors, whether it's at home, at work, inside some type of a building, and we don't know what that air exchange is. And so mm -hmm. there's chemicals in our homes um, that may be causing us to have, like you said, difficulty. Let's just say I'm going to use breathing. And it could just be from a chemical, not necessarily from a, a lung problem. So tell me more about why, we, why do we need to detox our home? What are some, let's just start with this. What are some things in our home that could be causing us to have some of these issues, breathing issues, sinus issues, skin issues? Well, let me start off with telling you uh, why I started detoxing. Um, I noticed that my son, he kept coughing. Like every morning he would get up and go in the bathroom and he would just have these coughing fits. And I also noticed that I had breathing problems. I couldn't breathe and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Why is this boy coughing every time he gets up and he goes in the bathroom? So I started to investigate. My Aunt Ida, mm -hmm. she was definitely a health advocate and she was always one to say, what's in it? She, she got me on the path to always investigate what's in it like what's in this product that you're using what's in this product you're putting in your body or on your skin so i said okay let me be a scientist and let me find out what is causing this problem so i started to uh watch him and see okay when is he coughing i noticed it was in the morning when he goes in the bathroom so i started to go in the bathroom and start to look for things that were um possibly be perfumey or you know, um, highly scented things so that I could try to eliminate those things. And I also went and found a site called uh, EWG, it's Environmental Workmen's Group. And they are people who go and they investigate products in the home and um, products that you would put on your skin and foods and different things. And they rate them from like A to F to let you know whether it is a healthy product 
or if there's a chemical in that product and then they break down what's in the product and what side effects that product could cause. And then they give you a list of healthy alternatives. So I said, okay, let me just start there. I'll start looking at what product I have. I can look it up on the website and see what rating it has. So as I was going through and I saw a lot of products I had were maybe like F's and I was like, oh, this is not good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I tried to get rid of those. And I had other products that maybe were like a C. I said, okay, that's better. Well, I first decided I had to decide which level of letter would I not go beyond? I, for me, I said, okay, I want to do an A or a B because those are the best, but I will not go beyond a C. Like if it's a C, I will use it for the time being until I can get something that's an A or a B product. But if it's a C, I'll use it for now. But anything beyond a C, I'm just going to get rid of it. So I bagged up the things that I found that, you know, were above a C. And I decided, okay, I'm just going to see if this makes any change. And I'm going to give these products away because a lot of them were like mostly full products. I'll just donate them. That was my original intention. Well, I did notice that he kind of stopped doing this coffin situation. And, but for me, I still couldn't breathe. And I'm like, what is it? Why can't I breathe? I went and I was like, I prayed and I said, Lord, you're going to have to show me what it is. Why can't I breathe? What's going on? And I happened to walk by the bag that I had full of the products to donate. And the strong was so, the smell was so strong and overpowering. I realized that's what was causing me the problem. Because when I went near, I was like, oh, I really can't breathe. So I decided to just take the products and throw them away. I'm like, I'm not even going to get them to somebody else so that they can have these same issues. I'm just going to toss them. And as soon as I got rid of that bag, immediately my air quality went up. That is incredible, Verna. I mean, I think that there's probably clean products that we may be using. Mm -hmm. and in that we can actually rate them from an A to an F, mm -hmm. whether or not how toxic they are to us. And I yes. think, you know, the company that you're talking about, you know, the EWG, that now they've gone through all these products and we always talk about read the ingredients or read the label for mm -hmm. foods, but now we need to begin to look at the labels for any cleaning pro products. Because I know when I used to use cleaning products, I was mm -hmm. More the better. Squirt more, <laughs> more, you know, it'll get it extra super duper clean. You know, mm -hmm. really, if it's a harmful or toxin, you know, while we're cleaning, we may that may be triggering things that are causing us to go to the doctor and we don't even realize the link. And the I like it, there's always a cause for how we're feeling. If we're not breathing, if we're coughing, if we're sneezing a lot there's always a cause and we need to get to the root cause. So I think we need to kind of pause and say, if I'm not feeling my best, what in my home possibly could be triggering these symptoms? Because again, go to the doctor, they give you a pill for the sneezing, the coughing, the, mm -hmm. the well, and those and, all, um, chemicals in them, toxins. And let me add, um, I did not just do cleaning products. Mm -hmm. I did anything that would be on my skin. That meant, um, lotions, soap, deodorants, um, shampoos, conditioners, because at the time, I knew I was smell sensitive. And apparently, whatever it was, was also causing him to cough and stuff. And I realized that um, every product gives off a fume. Mm -hmm. And some fumes are stronger than others. And you don't realize that every product that you have it, it lets off a fume, kind of like paint fumes when you, oh, that's what it's like. And it comes through the bottles. And at, that's how come I was able to realize that that was what was going on with us when I put them all together in the bag. They were combined fumes all coming off together and we didn't realize. So even some of our shampoos and stuff we had to get rid of because they were too, um, 
too much fragrance, I guess, too much perfumes and, and whatever else was in them. And, and you know, actually, many times we store all the cleaning products together, all mm -hmm. the products together. So that means that they are, you know, all of them are mixing together. Mm -hmm. you know, fumes, especially even in the bathroom, I would think, you know, when we do the shower and it gets humid in there, now that really does get everything all stirred up. Mm -hmm. And so tell me more about, so once you got rid of those products, so now that you got rid of them because you they were causing triggering, the sneezing, the coughing, the irritating, the difficulty breathing, what did you start using to clean with then? Um, I did some research and I found a company called Branch Basics and they offer a concentrate and spray bottles. And what you do is you buy the concentrate and the spray bottles. They have a starter kit and they tell you what all the um, products would turn into once you add, you just add water in the concentrate and it's all plant-based and it doesn't have any chemicals or anything. So like one concentrate would make three bottles of all purpose cleaner, three bottles of bathroom cleaner, three bottles of glass cleaner, three bottles of foaming hand wash and 64 loads of laundry. Okay. So they advocate home detox. So they want you to kind of like replace all of your products with this one thing. So that's what I did. I um, ordered their product. And then while I waited for the product to come, I'm like, okay, I have to clean before these products get here. So I researched and started making my own um, products and they work really, really well. <laughs> so I decided, whoa, this is what I need to be doing. What? And it just, I used um, like Castile soap, um, and water and I would dilute that and make a, an all-purpose cleaner, um, bacon soda, along with the Castile soap and water and maybe just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and that made like a soft scrub. Mm. And that's what we use and um, we use it on everything. Wow. So the simple products that we kind of push to the side is we got so mm -hmm. advanced because when I was younger, you know, they didn't have all those multiple choices of laundry mm -hmm. detergent and all those choices of dish detergent and all those choices of window cleaner. It was just a simple vinegar and water. You know? mm -hmm. Very yes. simple. I've heard of people making, you know, lemon and vinegar, just bacon mm -hmm. stuff. Like you said, the, the baking soda, baking soda will clean the sink just like cleanser will, you know, but yeah. sometimes they put chemicals in there um, toxins in there really that are harmful to the body. And I, I appreciate you talking about even on the skin, because our skin being the largest organ, when we put lotions and even shampoos and um, even dyes and stuff like that, yeah. it actually can cause, you know, trigger different things. Um, so your products came, they're plant-based. Mm -hmm. and so, and go ahead. Yeah, we, um, we started using them and we noticed such a big difference in how we felt and our air quality and the fact that we weren't sneezing and, you know, every time, because some products you start using them and then you just keep sneezing and you, you have to leave the room because you can't breathe because it is, you know, so yeah, it was definitely a big difference. You know, we talk a lot about the pollutants outside in the air, you know, mm -hmm. polluting it, the foggy, the this or that, but within inside our home, there's so many things that we need to be mindful of. And I do appreciate you talking about those chemicals and, and there's chemicals in furniture. There's certain yeah. fabrics and furniture that I cannot sit on because it causes it irritation to my skin. And I know it's because the way they, you know, they prep the front, the um, fabrics or whatever, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. have chemicals in them. And so some chemicals, we need to be mindful that they have, they have carcinogenic, carcinogens in them that we may not even know. So I think researching any type of things that we're putting on the skin, sitting on the skin, whatever that is, we need to do some research and ask questions about what's in the fabric, what's in the solution, you know, because we don't know. We don't know. Right. Well, this is where, too, um, the EWG comes in. They also have an app that you can download on your phone. 
so that when you're out and you're shopping for products, you could just pull up a product and look at it and it'll tell you what the letter rating is. And then you can decide whether or not you want it or not. And it will also break down if it's say like a F rating, why it's an F rating. It'll tell you what the different things are in that product and what their cause, you know, like maybe they might be a carcinogen or something like that. Well, you know, we all like to get A's. So I would, <laughs> I would strongly suggest all of us to look at the EWG app, put it on our phone, you know, put it up on your computer and know the things and even just go through your home this week and see what, what's in your home that could be triggering. And sometimes we don't have an immediate response, but over time, those fumes get into our lungs. I know of people who have never smoked before and they end up with eczema and they end up with lung conditions and they end up with, and like, well, they never smoked. Mm -hmm. I know how those chemicals could be affecting our lungs. Um, and I'm very sensitive to a lot of things. I have very sensitive lungs, so I have to be really careful. But what you don't want is you don't want to have an event and then you figure out you have very sensitive lungs. Uh, you want to protect the lungs. That's the most important thing. I had a friend who I was, um, we were going to go hang out together and we were riding in her car and she kept coughing. And I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. I said, well, you keep coughing. And she's like, I don't know what it is. Every time I get in the car, I start coughing. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, let's investigate. <laughs> what's, in, what's going on? Um, have you tried a new um, lotion or something? She's like, no. I said, do you get on any perfume or something? She said, no. I'm like, did you do something in your car? And so she said, no. She said, I just have this little Febreze vent thing. I said, mm, that's what it is. Take, I said, I take it out. She took it out. And I said, you need to get rid of that thing. We got rid of the thing. She stopped coughing. I said, mm-hmm, see? <laughs> wow, so it sounds like all of us need to be little investigators. So when we start having any issue, we need to start kind of doing a process of elimination and asking ourselves mm -hmm. questions. What did we change? Was it a lotion? Was it a shampoo? Was it something? I've even heard of people who have had, and, and they are not tying it directly to that, but they have like just gotten their hair colored or permed and then they mm -hmm. have some type mm -hmm. of thing happened. And so one of my friends now, as a result of that, does not use any chemicals in her hair because her doctor said, we can't pinpoint why you became sick like you did, but I'm asking that you not use any chemicals in your hair. Wow. So, um, yeah. So we don't know what's in them, but I do like that we have this EWG app that, and it's not mm -hmm. going to be 100% for every single thing in the world maybe, but it is a good starting point that we right. can start looking for those products that have the A, maybe A, B, just depending on mm -hmm. where we want to make that decision. And then we make it start making, a, this is about making a choice. You know? Yeah. And mm -hmm. we're concerned about what we eat or what we drink, but this is one they of the things we do. So the Bible talks about whatever we eat, drink, or do, do all to the glory of God. So when we do our cleaning, when we do our hair, when we do our skin, when we do all of that, these are the things that we're talking about today is the things that we do that could be introducing toxins into the body, not, not, we're not really knowing it, you know what I'm saying, unknowingly. And so that's why the, today's topic is so very, very important because this is something we haven't talked about before, our environment. What's in our environment that may be causing us to be sick? Once you remove the different products from your home, you will notice when you, something if you unknowingly bring something back into your home, you're going to know it almost immediately. Wow. You're going to smell it or you're going to have a reaction or something and you'll be able to quicker pinpoint, hey, I just bought this product and I wasn't feeling this way before it is. So, you know, then you can look and see what's in it. And I also noticed that when I went to the grocery store, after I've gotten rid of the product, I couldn't even walk near the aisle with the cleaning stuff on it because I could just smell this fume so strongly after removing them from my home and not, you know, constantly smelling, I guess you go nose blind mm -hmm. or something after you constantly smelling something. Right. But once I removed it, I could smell it so much more intensified when I got anywhere near it. Wow. Incredible. I mean, you know, I, 
I think that's really, this is really good information because when we go in the grocery store, we don't think about going, I mean, I don't think about when I'm going down the aisle, I will be more mindful now, but when we go down the aisle to get either cleaning products or dish detergent or different things, you know, we're exposing ourselves to chemicals to our lungs and our lungs mm-hmm. are so sensitive and they're so needed, you know, um, that we need to make sure we protect our lungs because once they shut down or start giving us problems, many times it's, a, on, it's chronic, it's a chronic condition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bad. So, um, what else do you, I mean, I know you say you make your cleaning products. You also order from the plant-based. Anything else <laughs> relates to detoxifying our home? Because how often do you actually go back through again and look at, at um, like I say, to make sure that you didn't bring something in inadvertently that maybe would be an, um, maybe lower than a C or higher than a C? Um, I try, well, okay. First I will say, you want, once you start doing it, you just want to get rid of everything. You just like, just get rid of everything. I don't want nothing in my house. But realistically, you may not always be able to do that at the start. So you have to just start where you can. And I, so I knew the kitchen and the bathroom were places we frequented all the time. Mm-hmm. So let me start there. What things can I make that um, would be more healthy I don't mind making stuff because I like that type of stuff. So for me, it wasn't a problem, but everybody may not like that or have the time. So that's where the branch basics would come in. Um, I started in the kitchen and I started making the products and using the thing. And I still, I'm always kind of re-looking at what, because maybe I had some products that was like, okay, it Maybe it's a, um, it was a C, but I hadn't finished using it, you know, and I'm like, well, I need this or maybe I'm not able to find an A or B in my area Mm -hmm. and I have to use the C because that's all is available to me at the time. So I just kind of go like that and, you know, I also research online different um, sites like there's one, it's lisabronner.com. Mm-hmm. She is um, the daughter of Dr. Bronner, who does the Castile soap. Mm-hmm. And she tells you all types of different recipes that you can make using the one bottle of Castile soap to do, you can use it as a shampoo, you can use it to clean your house, you can use it for laundry, to wash your pets. I mean, it's just one product that's versatile as well which is what I use as well if you're not able to do the branch basics thing it's you can get it from Walmart and pretty much anywhere Castile soap well you know a lot of people have like not a lot but I know of people who have air purifiers in their home but what I would say is start with like you're saying detoxing the home by removing those chemicals from the home because Mm -hmm. air purifiers are as good as the quality of air that's in your home. I'm not going to say I can't remove them, but we don't want to keep introducing things into our home that we have a no known that maybe have toxins in them. So if we have air purifiers in our home, we need to first still go through all of our cabins. And I like you talked about, you wanted your kitchen to be healthy and your bathroom to be healthy because you knew that those were areas where chemicals were stored. Mm-hmm. Though that makes it easy, you know, to go maybe start there and then if you break to where you do your, your laundry room is or whatever, then you can do that. But I would say to purify the air in those two areas, getting started with that, I would even challenge our audience this week to even just go in their bathroom, look at the look at the products that you have there and determine if they need to be, if you need to retain them or not. Mm-hmm. And as we gain knowledge, we want to apply knowledge. We don't want to just say, oh, that was good. That was good to hear. Because sometimes down the road, we may have side effects or actually may have repercussions because of, you know, the chemicals that are in our mm-hmm. Well, I, I also use my body as an indicator. Okay. Because um, sometimes, like as recently, I had, I was having trouble breathing in my bedroom and I was like, what? I'm trying to breathe in my bedroom and I started looking around okay maybe there's something in here I missed or maybe there's something in here that I thought was a good you know product but for me I have a sensitivity to it or something so I didn't realize hey it was a deodorant that I had and I'm like okay I wouldn't have thought you know of that and so I I had to get it out of my room and then I felt better 
you know, one thing that that's actually good. And you know, another thing is candles. Um, mm -hmm. had people give me candles in the last month. And honestly, you hate to throw them away. I had to put it in the other room because it uh, far away from me because it might, I have a very sensitive lung and I can smell almost everything, but I put it in a room that I don't really go in a lot mm -hmm. because it was so scented that I'm like, I can't keep it in here, you know, with me. Mm -hmm. I wanted or you to might have to, you might have to get rid of it because I mean, you hate to do, you know, I, I understand because I had stuff I was like, man, I just bought this. <laughs> I don't want to, and I can't take it back. But, you know, I'm like, uh, you like to breathe? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, well, you got to go. <laughs> so you <laughs> may have to, because them fumes, they may not be in the room with you, but they're still in the house. And if you could do an experiment, take the, take the candles out the house and tie them up in the bag and maybe sit them outside on your back porch or something for a little while and see if you notice a difference. Well, you know, and I think, I don't think, I think we have to protect our lungs when we're around people. Cause sometimes people put on that strong perfume and they can <laughs> yes. do clothes up or some people like to spray the air freshener in the house, you know, like I want to, and I remember uh, my mom, she loved to spray air freshener. Mm -hmm. And when she got sick, she still had the little spraying going. And I said, listen, mom, she didn't know that I had such sensitive lungs. Mm -hmm. so I said, if you spray that, I could stop breathing. And it was serious. That's how serious my lungs are. Mm -hmm. so she didn't know that I had that sensitivity. But that's what will happen is if I get around some of strong perfume or anything very strong scented, that I can actually feel my lungs closing down. So yeah. The candle, you're right. I, you know, as much as I don't want to, you know, get rid of it, but it is, you're right. It's not in my immediate area where I travel, but that's, I'm sure it has some. It still has an effect. You need, you need to take it out, put it in, you know, like I said, in a bag on your back porch or something and, and leave it for a, a day or a few hours or so and see if you notice a difference, even in your breathing. Oh. I ha I had I had to do that because I I what you're saying people we say they marinated in the perfume or <laughs> you know it's too it's too much it's too strong and so, it's, and I don't know if the perfume I know we like to smell nice but I think it's just really we just have to protect our lungs it's very very important that we do that mm -hmm. you know there's some house plants that help remove toxins from the air as well so I think what's the bottles and all of the mm -hmm. all of that stuff then I think maybe thinking about adding plants in the home mm -hmm. that will continue to um remove the toxins yeah I think um I think a spider plant is one of the plants okay and um I can't remember the name of the other ones but I'm thinking just plants in general because you know they give off oxygen so that will help but you definitely have to get rid of the cough. you got to go to the root right you can't you can't do the symptom thing you got to go to the root and get rid of it and then that will alleviate a whole lot of other things i agree with you because you know what we're good at symptoms i have a headache and we'll take a pill but why do i have a headache could it be the chemicals in my home could it be the carpet could it be my you know i just got my furniture clean could it be any mm -hmm. of those things and it really, you're right. I mean, we can put plants in there all day long, but if the cause remains there, it's going to still trigger a reaction. So some of the plants that I did find, though, if anyone's interested, is the mother-in-law tongue. I think Edna spoke about that when she was on the call and she could showed us a, um, you know, she had a plant in her home. But the spider plant is one of them. Uh, the peace lily, any type of bamboo. Actually, I have bamboo on my, on my um, patio. Bamboo palm. All of those are things that can help remove toxins or help eliminate or reduce them in the home. And so, um, but you know, even just changing your um, air conditioner filter, that's important too, because sometimes we, you know, it's mm -hmm. all kind of stuff. If you have animals in the home, people in and out of your home, changing the filter at least once a month at minimum to make sure that the air is as clean as possible. That's, that's very important also. Mm -hmm. Um, I do like that you mentioned about the um, the air fresheners that we may put in our car, those synthetic air fresheners. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't think about it. We just want the car to smell good, like a brand new car or whatever. But those actually, many times they have chemicals in there that do trigger um, 
you know, ir ir it's, an, well, it's an irritant. Um, if you if you want to um, have a fragrance in your car or in your home, you could use essential oils. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, one thing that I don't know how many people do this, but I enjoy opening the windows to my house, but we need to open the windows more you mm -hmm. know, um, in the morning, let that fresh air come in. I like to lift up the windows um, and then you can just, you know, allow it to go through your house to exchange that air out because opening yeah. the windows coming in out is not enough but when we open the windows for you know maybe five or ten minutes or a half hour or most of the day if you can mm -hmm. it, that does remove toxins or help re reduce the uh, number of toxins in your home also and also um being mindful of um your frequency of you changing your your sheets and your pillowcases yes because if you don't change your pillowcases frequently, that also could um, bother you as far as breathing goes and your laundry stuff, because they're so highly fragranced. And then you put them on your skin when you're clothes and you sleeping on them and breathing it in. And it's, yeah, we had to <laughs> eliminate all, we had to change all of that. Yeah, so yeah, that's a very good point of changing the linen frequently. Um, in fact, as you, you know, as you know that sometimes people do it weekly, but some people mm -hmm. don't have any schedule. They just do it whenever they feel like it. But mm -hmm. I think the schedule will help because we put our head on it, the grease, we've been outside, stuff, you know, things that we cannot see are in our homes, even with our shoes, things that we walk out on and we bring those in the home. Um, all of those mm -hmm. happen, even just simple dusting. My mother used to have us dust at least every Friday. You know, as you get older, mm. I don't see any dust, you know, but <laughs> better wiping down, you know. So having yeah. a clean home is not just as on the surface. This is really the key message today. It's not just on the surface. It looks clean. It smells clean. Number one, what are you cleaning with? What's in the mm -hmm. cleaner? Is it healthy cleaning uh, products? You know, that is also very important. Because if you're cleaning, it looks clean on the surface, but if you're cleaning mm -hmm. products that are irritating your lungs and your skin and your everything, then that's, that's creating another problem. And, and again, I think many times people will say, I went to the doctor, all of my tests came back normal. They could not find anything. They don't know why my chest x-ray is fine. You know, they can't find mm -hmm. anything. And it could be simply the things that are in our home, the cleaning items that could be in our yeah. home. So yes, we want to- another Another thing you can do too is um, what we did was we noticed that when we left the house, we felt better. Oh. When we came back home, we was like, man, what's wrong? We can't breathe. <laughs> so we realized it was something in the home. Mm. Wow. Wow. Well, Brenda, this has been really interesting. I want to open the, the, um, the mic for anyone who may have questions uh, because I do know that as much as we want to live healthy internally inside our body, what's around us, what's in our environment certainly can influence how we feel. And like you said, we got to get to the root cause. We got to stop saying, I don't feel good. I don't feel well, but what is the root cause? And sometimes just by eliminating things out of our home and you're right. Sometimes we just bought a chemical, but if it means that I'm going to be well or, you know, or not well, unwell, then mm -hmm. I need to make that choice. It's really about choice. Um, because we can burn that candle or we can do whatever we want to do, but if it's going to trigger a reaction, then we need to be really mindful of that. So yeah, you, you can't be uh, afraid to be hurting people's feelings because if you can't breathe, <laughs> you know, that is so very true. And then the other thing I would mention also, is if you have carpet in your home and you vacuum, change out your bags regularly, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you pets and things like that, because sometimes we just keep on vacuuming until, you know, forever in a day, but those bags need to be changed out as well because again, that dust that's in the bag over time, it, you know, if you you know if you just keep letting it grow up, you know, um, build up in there till it gets totally full, you know, again, that those are toxins and irritants. I should say irritants for the lungs. So let's open it up. I think there, I bet there's some people who have some questions, and I want to give them an opportunity. This has been so interesting, Bernadette. Burnett about you know about these um, chemicals in our homes. We want to have a healthy home. It's yes. a healthy body, healthy home. We want to be healthy. So let's 
let's open it up to our audience. Maybe someone else has an experience of what they've done to detox their home, or they may have a question about still asking, why do I need to do this? So let's, let's give them an opportunity, um, Burnett, to, to ask us some questions. Okay. If not, we'll keep talking. <laughs> okay. Any questions, any thoughts? Wow. This, this is Emily. Hi, everyone. Um, I know I have, I had an experience with um, chemicals in my car. I had, I got this scented, um, it was like a Christmas tree scented stuff to put in my car. And I had it in my car. And the moment I got into my car, I was coughing, sneezing. And I realized that was something different. I took it out and everything ceased. Pineapple. Um, also, I was going to say sometimes, because I don't use perfume really, um, we can use essential oils. I was going to ask Burnett if, she, if there's any recommendation she might know of essential oils that we can use as perfume. As perfume, uh, lavender is one you could use as perfume. Um, I know of some as far as cleaning, like if you wanted to do uh, a disinfectant, lavender is also a good uh, disinfectant. You would just dilute it like 10 drops of it in a spray bottle full of water and you could use it to clean down your counters and different things like that, bathroom, kitchen, things like that. Um, I'm trying to think as far as perfume I don't wear perfume either <laughs> so I don't you might be able to use uh I'm thinking usually they have different blends that they blend together mm -hmm. to, um, to, to do perfume type things I know there was one um Young Living Oils used to have one and it was called Joy and that was um smelled very good that you could probably use as a perfume. Uh, you could also use, as far as disinfectant goes, like orange oil. You can pour, put that in the same thing, 10 drops into a, a spray bottle with water. And I use filtered water, if you can. So, um, I don't uh, know. Filtered water to mix the, um, the essential oils in. Um, say that again? You use filter water to mix the essential oils? Yes, when I'm using it as a, a cleaning for disinfecting and stuff like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I know um, essential oils maybe, maybe is something that people who want to use perfume and, not want, and do not want to use the ones with the chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, having a carrier oil, like coconut oil or olive oil or something to it, you know, maybe can be used. And as you said, maybe there's some oils that are already mixed and yeah. uh, can use for is for perfume. Yeah. You know, I know that you mentioned deodorant, um, Burnett. And mm -hmm. even, I know that coconut oil, just plain coconut oil can be used for deodorant. You don't even have to buy the deodorant, you know, because coconut oil is as effective as a deodorant by itself, just straight coconut oil. Oh, well, I'll have to try try that one. Yep, it is. I've been doing it for about three years and it works. Oh, yeah. great. Okay, well, thank you because I will be trying that one. It does work. Yeah. Yeah. Coconut oil is, yeah. Go ahead, Em. Well, I would say coconut oil has a lot of um, benefits for um, anti antibacterial. It has a lot of benefits in that sense. Coconut, coconut oil. I put it on the skin. Um, I mm -hmm. use that on my skin. Yeah, and it keeps away, you know, fungus and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I would uh, take coconut oil, like uh, like maybe a teaspoon of coconut oil. Um, this for you, Jennifer. Like when my lungs would feel like they were tightening up on me, mm -hmm. um, Aunt Ida told me to do the coconut oil because it has omega three. And that helps you with your, your lung function. So 
whenever I would feel like my lungs are tightening up, I would just go get me a, a teaspoon or a tablespoon, no more than that, because it's too much. <laughs> and well, for me, I have to drink something behind it quick, you know, but um, yeah, but then it helps. It, it, it helps to open up your, your lungs and it helps me to realize that I'm, I'm really low on omega-3. Wow. I didn't, I didn't know that about the lungs. So, I mean, I do mm -hmm. I use coconut oil on my skin. I don't use lotion. I use coconut oil, mm -hmm. um, but that's good to know about the lungs. So I need to take it mm -hmm. on the outside and on the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the other thing it that definitely came, helps. The other thing that came to my mind is pesticides. You know how, because sometimes when the mosquitoes out, we want to put all that off and spray that stuff around or mm -hmm. around the house, people will use pesticides and you know, they're spraying that stuff and it's aerosolizing out into the air and into your lungs. Um, it's just really advisable. Put on mask if you're going to be spraying anything um, to keep, at least it will prevent it from going directly into your nostrils. So, um, you know, yeah, a good, um, what do you call it, insect repellent. Eucalyptus oil. Mm. As, I use eucalyptus and some peppermint. You can spray mm -hmm. that as an insect repellent. Oh, eucalyptus. Okay. Um, eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. you also, can add to, excuse me, mm -hmm. please. You can also add to that bug spray a citronella. Mm -hmm. um, plus those oils that Emily said, you can add lemon, citronella, the lavender, the peppermint, the witch hazel. And you can just try your own and see if it works. Use the same spray bottle instead of using the um the regular bug spray, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. I wanted to add also about the sunscreen that you may use with the oxybenzone. It is dangerous for the skin. It can affect ladies and men you can go into the breast milk of of pregnant people and cause endometriosis and lower lower the sperm count and testosterone of men so when we buy in our sunscreen we should look for one with a zinc base or coconut base coconut oil base sunscreen and uh, do not spray it on your skin. Spray it in your hand and rub it on your skin. Mm -hmm. We have quite a lot of information about all these products, which I find very interesting to us. And I also remembered hearing about Dr. Bronner's, which our presenter talked about. And uh, I have a note here about the different things that they make, like the hand cream with Shea and coconut oil base. So all of these things is good to do your research and find the things that would not harm you. One by one, we can eliminate them from our lives. Yeah, because a lot of time we just feel we just not feeling right. And uh, mm -hmm. like I'm here, I'm here in Saint Croix, and I was cleaning, and I was using some Fabuloso. You know, my parents have a whole bunch of this cleaning stuff, so I was just using what they had. And some, every time I use that Fabuloso, I just get so tired. Something about it just makes me so tired. So I had to stop and I realized something that Fabuloso is making me just feel listless, tired. I don't know what it is. So we have to listen to our bodies and um, try and use more natural stuff because they're mm -hmm. just as effective in cleaning, just as effective and even better I, 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 if I add that to, um, you know, but, you know, to clean and to keep away bugs and infection and what have you. When we use these things that are harmful to our body, it causes inflammation. Inflammation mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why we get sick. So the less inflammatory process that goes on in our body is the healthier and better we will feel. Great, thank you for sharing that, Emmeline. So, you know, um, thank you all so much for it. Burnett, thank you so much for this informative um, presentation today. I mean, it really has opened our eyes that we want our homes to be healthy. Every yes, I'm glad. <laughs> we wanna be healthy, we want the home to be healthy. 
And when we begin to feel sick, always look at the cause, try to get to the root cause of it. Yes, schedule the doctor's appointment. Yes, do all of those things. But the most important thing is, is there something in my home that's causing me or triggering this inflammatory response and I'm not feeling well? And don't ignore it because again, it could end up in the emergency room with a respiratory problem. And so you don't want to ignore it. I'll tell this last story about, it's been over 20 years ago, my brother was getting married and I went to the, um, the rehearsal that night, the Saturday night, went to the rehearsal and they had just painted the church. And that night, later in the night, I got very sick. My lungs began to just were so painful. And they put, they, I went to the emergency room, they put me in the hospital. So of course I didn't make it to the wedding. Um, but I initially didn't know what happened because I never had had problems with my lungs before. But uh, my brother said to me, I think it was the paint because they had just recently painted the church that triggered that, um, that response that I had. So again, the reason we're talking about this today because it's important. The reason we're talking about it because we want you to be well from head to toe. Um, and we want to continue to get on our journey of living healthy, happy, and holy. And so with that being said, Bernat, thank you again. Can, can I say one last thing? Absolutely. Um, when you were talking earlier about pesticides, I was thinking about our pets, oh, yeah. thinking about what we put on them, because we always touching them. And if we put in things on them, you know, maybe to keep the bugs off of them or whatever, it may be affecting us as well. So if you're able to do healthy alternatives for your pet, think about that as well. Thank you for saying that. You know, I wanna remind you that website, that app that she talked about was EWG app. That's the one that we can look at the products and we can see if it's an A, B, C, D or F. And if it's an F, we probably should not bring it into our homes because it is at a higher risk of the toxins. Remember, removing the toxins, getting plants in your home that can remove those toxins are things that we can do. We don't have to pay anybody. Those are things that we can take charge of our health. Those are choices that we can make. So I would say, I hope there's something that you learned today from our presentation and that you will find it helpful on your health journey. So we're going to close out. Thank you again, Bernadette. I greatly appreciate you bringing this topic to my attention and sharing your testimony of how you benefited. And I'm praying that each one of us will benefit. Remember the Bible says, whatever you eat, drink, and this is whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So let's continue to live healthy, happy, and holy. I'm gonna stop recording, but I wanna say we're gonna close out with prayer and allow you to give us our, your prayer request. And then we have a topic for next week that you do not want to miss.